I'm Aaron Forster. And I'm Scott Keyes. And we're actually here at Helio Basin Brewing in Arcadia, basically Phoenix, Arizona. They are a newer brewery, and I want to say they've only been open for about a month. The head brewer, from what I understand, was originally at Four Peaks Brewing in Tempe a while back, and then was been one of the uh, head brewers up in Southern Tier Brewing in New York, which is one of our favorite yeah. brewing companies. Right now, they have uh, six house beers and uh, also one specialty beer, so we're gonna go ahead and review these and tell you what we think. Absolutely, all right, let's all right. get started. So uh, for my first review, uh, for video review, it's gonna be their Blackberry Wheat. It's a 4.9 ABV, uh, 15 IBU. Um, it's, a, it's just a hint of Blackberry, so let's take a look and see what fits in good. The nose, it is very faint. Um, you can tell there's a little bit of the Blackberry on it. The flavor is a lot stronger than the smell. Um, it's got a very nice berry flavor, um, slightly artificial, which I can imagine with uh, with uh, blackberries, it's gonna be it's kind of hard to get that much concentration. But um, the nice wheat finish, uh, nice and clean. A little bit of bitter uh, notes to it, but aside from that, it's, it's a good berry beer. I'm not my personal favorite. But then again, it's not my favorite style. Okay, so we're here at Halia Brewing Company and um, brand new brewery. There's their logo for those of you who may not be familiar with it. Uh, pretty nice and clean logo. Uh, but uh, they've just released a specialty ale uh, called their Citrus Paradisi. And uh, it's a hoppy blonde ale. So we're going to give it a shot. Uh, it's described as having the aromas of sweet candy grapefruit. Uh, and so hopefully it'll be a nice, clean, refreshing beer. Uh, something that's got a little bit more punch to it than perhaps their, their house beer, which was fairly tasty, but uh, a good introduction for people who aren't familiar with craft beer. So let's see how we're going to work on this. Clean, clean color. SRM looks pretty good. Definitely has an aroma of an IPA, uh, a session IPA, so the hop, hop nose is, is quite forward. So it's got a creamy mouthfeel. Um, there's a lot of hopness, or, or there's a lot of hop flavor going on in this beer, although it's not bitter. And while the, the hop aroma is lingering, it uh, leaves you with a bit of a pininess. Uh, but there's a lot of citrus fruit in there as well. Uh, it's a very, very well paired uh, grouping of ingredients they've got here. This is uh, definitely going to be something that I would drink quite a bit of. Uh, hot day, cold day, I wouldn't matter to me. Uh, for people who like IPAs or extra pale ales, uh, this is definitely going to be right up your alley without a lot of alcohol. Uh, and sitting at 8.5%, so I actually guess it's a little bit higher than I anticipated it to be. 85 IBUs. Uh, so, solid beer. Definitely hit a home run. There. Well, it's my turn to review another beer. Right now, I'm actually going to be doing the uh, Robust Porter here at Helio Basin. Uh, this one uh, is about 5.8 ABV and about uh, 40 IBU, so it's probably going to be kind of just moderate. According to their description, it's going to be uh, coffee and dark chocolate hints for this. Now, uh, admittedly so, I'm not a huge heavy coffee flavor um, kind of guy in my beers. I don't mind it if it is in it to enhance it, but if it's like coffee for it's not my favorite. So, take take my, uh, my advice with a grain of salt. So, but let's check out, take a look at the nose first. I mean, it's definitely a little roasty, a little bit chocolatey. I'm not really picking up on the coffee. Let's see how it tastes. Now that's interesting because although there's supposed to be notes of coffee in there, I don't detect it. It's very dark chocolatey, but not really bitter. Um, it's just got a really nice finish. So if you're eating like say like a 70% bar of dark chocolate, that would be a better comparison for the flavor you're looking for. The malts on this is also, they're very well balanced and they're sweet but not overpowering. And uh, for a porter, this is a, just a good everyday porter. If you're not really into stouts per se, this would be a, the beer I'd probably go towards. Okay, so uh, now we're going to be looking at the uh, Helio Basin Pale Ale. Now, 
they're not my favorite style of beers anymore, but for the longest time when I first got into craft beers, I really thought that pale ale was the way to go because there's so many variations on how you can do a pale ale. You can have a very hot forward pale ale or a very malt forward pale ale or the blend in between. And so it's, a, it's sort of an empty palette, uh, not empty palette, but an empty canvas. You can do so many different things with a pale ale. And so I wanted to take a look at this particular beer, even though pale ales themselves have become very commonplace and you don't necessarily see tons of breweries just making pale ales anymore just because they can do so many other things. I like to see a quality pale ale because it's one of those things that when I go into a brewery, if there's, if there's something on there I, I don't know what I want, I'm gonna go for the pale ale because Again, so many potential uh, things you can get out of it. So this one's sitting at 50 IBU, so I'm assuming it's going to be slightly hot forward as opposed to malt forward. This is also indicated by the SRM, uh, slightly uh, weedy golden color. 5.5% uh, alcohol, so it's not a heavy hitter, but it's definitely enough to, to get the job done. So let's take a see what we get on the nose. So the nose, there's not a whole lot actually going on there. I don't, I don't get a, a lot of uh, uh, aroma or fragrance on the nose. But the flavor profile is, in fact, I would actually describe it as a bit biscuity. Um, it's got um, a bit of a hop aroma there, but it's not as hot forward as I expected it to be. Uh, indeed, it's, it's a little bit more maltier, maltier heavier. Um, more mouthfeel characteristic of an ESP, I would say. Um, definitely an approachable beer. Uh, it's not going to scare anybody off. Uh, what I would suggest if you're a brand new to craft beer, start off with their house beer and then move to this pale ale. Uh, it's going to step you up in flavor profile, but it's not going to be an aggressive amount of, of change. So, uh, something I could drink quite a bit of uh, on a hot day, cold day. Of course, I could drink beer every day, so there you have it. But definitely solid pale ale. Okay, so we're finishing up here at Halio Basin Brewing, and um, as we mentioned before, this is a brand new startup brewery, been open for just a hot minute, a couple weeks, uh, and overall I would give them a B plus, uh, A minus for what they're doing. Generally, startup breweries need some time to sort of work out the kinks, and they seem to already got their kinks worked out, and I suspect that these guys are only going to get better. Um, overall, the beers are pretty solid, they're all to style. Uh, very clean, very refreshing. Uh, my favorite beer at this particular place would have been their IPA. It's a very well balanced between a malt and a hop. Very clean, very great, and uh, I can drink that all day. I'd actually have to say my favorite beer here was their porter, believe it or not. I'm kind of surprised. Uh, as Scott, we were saying off the video, was that it's a very generic palette for doing whatever, whether it be barrel aging, or if you want to make it, say, a chili beer, or if you want to make a coffee beer, it was it's a really good avenue to start off with for potential, yeah, for future beers. And we see a lot of good things coming out of Helio Basin, and so thank you, Helio Basin, uh, for making good, good stuff, and we're off to the next stop. Absolutely.